Over the last few weeks, AMD and Intel have been extremely busy, between them launching a grand total of eight new desktop CPUs. As all eight are high-end processors, we decided it would be more interesting and helpful to compare all of them together in one video, rather than making separate videos on each new CPU. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first new AMD CPU out the door was the Ryzen 9 3950X. Compared to the existing 3900X, which is a 12-core, 24-thread processor, the new 3950X ups this to 16 cores and 32 threads, stepping neatly on the toes of Intel's Core X high-end desktop processor range. Cramming so many cores into a mainstream CPU is a pretty incredible affair and is yet another indication of the superiority of AMD's 7 nanometer manufacturing process. A small word of caution though, the 3950X doesn't ship with a CPU cooler, so if you're interested in this new processor, make sure you buy a compatible cooler at the same time. You can see how fast the new Ryzen 3950X is later on in this video in the benchmark section. AMD has also started rolling out the first models of the third gen Threadripper series. The first two models launched are the 3960X, which is a 24 core, 48 thread processor, and the 3970X, which is a 32 core, 64 thread processor. Like the second generation before it, the third gen Threadrippers not only have more cores than Ryzen processors, but also more PCIe lanes and a quad channel memory controller. The PCIe configuration is pretty pretty complex for third gen Threadrippers, with 48 lanes for expansion cards, 8 more lanes for NVMe SSDs, plus a few more lanes for USB 3.2 Gen 2 and the new TRX40 chipset. As a result, the third gen Threadrippers do require a new motherboard. All the PCIe lanes are of course the all new super fast PCIe 4.0 variety, giving these new processors unparalleled I.O. for a desktop CPU. In addition, unlike the first and second gen Threadrippers, which had a dummy die, which caused some problems with performance, third gen Threadrippers have a balanced architecture, which should significantly improve performance in less heavily threaded software, such as games. We managed to get hold of a sample of the flagship 3970X in time to benchmark for this video, so keep watching to check out the results. This table highlights the key specs of the new high-end AMD processors, plus their two immediate predecessors, the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X and AMD Threadripper 2990WX. Intel have also been busy cherry-picking the very best 9th gen Coffee Lake CPUs and launching them as the core i9-9900KS. Whilst the 9900KS has the same 8-core, 16-thread spec as the existing 9900K, the TDP has been raised from 95 watts to 127 watts. This means it not only runs at 400 megahertz with a higher base clock of 4.0 gigahertz, but can also turbo to 5.0 gigahertz on all cores, the first CPU capable of such a high frequency without overclocking. You do pay around £70 for the privilege though, plus the limited run of 9900KS only has a one-year warranty compared to the three-year warranty of most desktop CPUs. You can see how much faster the 9900KS is than the 9900K a little later in this video. This table highlights the key specs of the new Intel Core i9-9900KS plus the original Intel Core i9-9900K for reference. Intel is also rolling out the 3rd Gen Core X series with four new processors for the aging Socket 2066 platform and X299 chipset. These new processors start with a 10 as opposed to the existing 9 series and include models with 10 cores and 20 threads all the way up to 18 cores and 36 threads. Whilst this is no more cores than the previous 9 series models, the new models do benefit from the revised Cascade Lake X architecture, which adds in support for Intel Deep Learning Boost. The most outwardly notable change though is in the pricing, with the new 10 series selling for close to half the launch price of the 9 series. We got our hands on the flagship Core i9-10980XE 
and the 10920, so keep watching to find out how fast these new CPUs are. This table highlights the key specs of the new Intel Core X series processors. We put all the high-end AMD and Intel CPUs through their paces, not only against each other, but some of their predecessors too. To make the comparison as fair as possible, all the systems were tested in a very similar configuration, with the same graphics card and same amount of RAM. We also ran the same test of benchmarks on all the CPUs in an overclocked configuration. Rather than trying to achieve the absolute highest overclock possible with exotic cooling and marginal stability, we focused our overclocking efforts on running the CPUs with an overclock that could run an overnight stress test. For example, an overclock that you can actually make use of every day. This graph shows the all-core overclock we achieved on each CPU relative to its base clock. A word of caution though when looking at the performance graphs in the next section of this video. In some of the lightly multi-threaded benchmarks, you might spot that an overclocked CPU achieved a lower result than it did at stock speeds. This is because some CPUs can achieve a higher turbo speed on some cores than their all-core frequency, and is something to think about carefully when considering whether to overclock a CPU. Cinebench R20 is based on the popular modelling, animation and rendering application Cinema 4D, and this test renders a complex scene on a single thread. While you'd never deliberately choose to only render on a single thread, this is an interesting test as it reveals the single core performance difference between the various CPU architectures. Of particular note is that massive 22% improvement between the Threadripper 2990WX and the 3970X. The next Cinebench test we ran renders the same scene on all available threads, so it generally favours CPUs with lots of cores. Standout results from this test are the 16-core Ryzen 9 3950X, beating the 18-core Intel Core i9 10980XE. AMD really does dominate this sort of workload now offering a choice of amazing value for money with the Ryzen series and outstanding I.O. with the Threadripper series. We also ran the popular game benchmark 3D Mark Times by on all the CPUs and observed that they all pretty much got the same score, apart from the two Threadrippers which lagged well behind. The low score of the 2990WX wasn't a surprise, but we were disappointed by the low, albeit improved score of the 3970X. Clearly, there's still room for improvement with some lightly threaded software on Threadripper. The Superposition game benchmark also showed how little performance difference there is between contemporary high-end CPUs. Interestingly, the two Threadripper CPUs perform much better in Superposition than they did in 3D Mark Time Spy. That said, any of these CPUs will be a great choice for gaming when partnered with a suitable graphics card. The next test, W Prime, is a synthetic maths test benchmark that calculates square roots using a recursive call of Newton's method for estimating functions on all available threads. As such, it's no surprise to see the two Threadripper CPUs dominate the graph with the shortest calculation times thanks to their 32 cores and 64 threads. And just like in Cinebench, the 16-core Ryzen 9 3950X proved faster in W Prime than the 18-core i9 10980XE with the two 8-core 16-thread Core i9 9900s lagging well behind the other CPUs. The image editing test in CPC Realbench edits a sequence of photos in GIMP and generally runs fastest on CPUs with a high IPC and high frequency. As such, it came as no surprise to see the Core i9 9900 KS scoring so highly, although the Ryzen 9 3950X snuck past with a slightly faster score, which goes to show that AMD Precision Boost 2 technology works really well at increasing performance the lightly threaded workloads. The second test in CPC Realbench encodes a video into H.264 using Handbrake and normally runs best on CPUs with lots of cores and threads. The issues with thread scheduling that hindered the Threadripper 2990WX appear to have been resolved with the 3970X, with the latter finishing the video encode in a record time. 
Other standout results include the Ryzen 3950X in second place, although the Core i9 10980XE was also incredibly fast when overclocked. As you'd expect, the eight core Intel Core i9s lagged along in last place at video encoding. They simply don't have enough cores or threads to keep up with other high-end CPUs. The multitasking test in RealBench runs several applications in parallel, so it's not only very processor intensive but also runs better on systems with fast memory. AMD processors took the top three places with the Ryzen 9 3950X in pole position. Things aren't too bad for Intel though, especially if you plan on overclocking the Core i9 10980XE. For the first time in years, there's a genuine competition in the high-end desktop CPU market, with a combined total of 10 AMD and Intel processors to consider. The first of the new processors, the Intel Core i9-9900KS, boasts a 5 GHz all-core turbo frequency and is also a fantastic overclocker, but it's let down by its aging architecture and dated manufacturing process. As a result, Intel no longer makes the undisputed best CPU for gaming, whilst in heavily multi-threaded applications and when multitasking, its mere 8 cores and 16 threads are also quite limiting. The one-year warranty of the 9900KS is also disappointing. It feels funny to say a mere 8 cores, but when 7 of the 8 new processors launch this winter have 10 or more cores, 8 cores really does feel quite underpowered. Intel's other new processors, the 3rd Gen Core X series, have more going for them, with substantially better pricing than the 2nd Gen Core X processors. For instance, you can now pick up an 18-core i9-10980XE for close to half the price of the 18-core i9-9980XE when it launched last winter. Even so, these CPUs are also held back by the outdated X299 chipset, which lacks support for modern features such as USB 3.2, let alone PCIe 4.0. The pricing and 10 to 18 cores of the new Core X series put them more in line with AMD's Ryzen 9 processors than Threadripper, and at this end of the market, competition is extremely fierce. The closest match are the 12-core, 24-thread Core i9-10920X and the 16-core, 32-thread Ryzen 9 3950X. In the 3D rendering test Cinebench, the Ryzen 9 proved an astonishing 38% faster than the Core i9, a pattern echoed in all the other benchmarks apart from games, where both CPUs are essentially as fast as each other. Overall, the Ryzen 9 3950X is clearly the go-to high-end CPU, as it even speeds past the more expensive Core i9-10940X and Core i9-10980XE CPUs. With Intel's range topping at 18 cores and 36 threads, AMD's third generation Threadripper series has the top of the market to itself. Boasting 24 cores and 48 thread and 32 cores with 64 thread models, plus a 64 core 128 thread model coming in early 2020. Whilst the new Threadrippers are truly outstanding performers and offer the largest number of high speed PCIe 4.0 lanes around, we're still not convinced of their need in a gaming PC. Games simply don't take advantage of that many cores, even if you're gaming and streaming on the same PC. However, the new Threadripper 3960X and 3970X are clearly the new kings of the workstation market and should be at the top of the shortlist for anybody doing a lot of rendering or video editing. Tell us what you think of the new chips in the comments section below and which one tickles your fancy. All of the new high-end AMD and Intel CPUs are available to order at scan.co.uk.